Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking late summer bass fishing and I have got some top water tricks that will help you catch more fish. The top water bite is incredible right now. A lot of guys are out fishing deep. They're not even doing it. They believe that because the temperatures are so high during the day that the bulk of bass are deep, so that's where they go. And while they might be right, the bulk of bass are out there, there are still plenty of bass up shallow, and there are some tricks to get those fish to bite. I throw a ton of top water right now. The vast majority of my top water in the late summer is fast moving baits, and we're going to talk about that today. But I do have one exception, and we're gonna start there, because there are some misunderstandings about late summer, high heat, middle of the day top water. The time of day when nobody wants to be on the water is an amazing time to throw a frog. The higher the heat, the more shade is key. Bass that are up shallow will get right up in the darkest shade that they can. They'll get up in heavy cover. They'll get under docks. They'll get under matted vegetation. And the frog is a huge player in that situation. Uh, I grabbed my three favorite colored frogs and I grabbed three different frogs that are all great options. Chartreuse, then white, then black in that particular order. Don't care which brand, but in that particular order, that's where my confidence lies this time of year. This is the Little Allen, River to Sea, Bullywatu, Little Allen. That's the scum frog. And that's a Spro Bronze Eye. But chartreuse, then white, then black. Here's the key. Here's, if you're not catching frogfish this time of year, man, it is blazing. If you're not catching frogfish this time of year, what you're probably doing wrong is throwing it at the wrong time of day. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. like clockwork. That's your window. When everybody else has put top water down, they've either picked up a spinning rod or gone home, that is when you wanna throw that frog. The higher the sun, the more miserable the conditions, the more likely that the bass have pulled right up under the shade and are sitting in very predictable locations. We've covered this in recent videos about the specifics of shade and where to find these fish. But when the sun is the highest and everyone else has given up, that's actually the exact right time to pick up a traditional frog and fish slowly right on the shade, right in the heavy cover it works and it will catch big ones. There are big fish that stay shallow all summer and the frog is one of the best ways to get them out. Now, that said, the rest of the day, early in the day, late in the evening, I focus all my time this time of year on faster moving baits. And the style of bait depends on how much junk is in your water, how clear your water is, some of those different variables. Uh, toads, if you've got a lot of cover, same place you throw the frog in the middle of the day, early and late I lean more towards a toad. Be that a teckle or this spro with the two legs that is stretchy. We started throwing this when it came out last year and have just waylaid them on it. But the teckle or that guy, both great options for covering water, straight retrieve in heavy cover and pulling those fish out. The other two are gonna be, well, this is sort of hard to categorize. The other one is buzz baits. Let's go buzz baits and then we'll circle back on the hard to categorize baits because there's some keys there. A buzz bait, I've got three approaches. Okay, now the buzz bait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up a little bit, back to that midday frog. You can also catch them on a buzz bait then if there's a lot of shade. So say they're in offshore grass clumps and there's a lot of them. So you pitch the frog here, work it, reel up, pitch it there, work it, reel up, right? You're picking it apart. You can go faster with a buzz bait because you can line up 
multiple good looking spots and throw across them and then run over that grass, now across the open water, run over that grass across the open water. So you can hit more spots effectively. Midday, I want my buzz bait to be subtle. Again, I wanna be going slow and I want it to look right. So there's two things that I do. This is a, a dirty jigs buzz bait, skirtless. There's no skirt on here, just an exposed lead head. Now I put on a River to Sea D Walker. The reason why I use that swim bait is it's got a good hard kick. It's got enough mass that it can go over that lead without ripping. It's the 120 size. And then the thing is durable. No joke, I've probably caught 40 on this one. On that specific swim bait, they last forever, which for a manufacturer, I suppose is a terrible thing, but for the angler, it's fantastic. Uh, that's a bait that I can just pick up midday, roll it around the edges of that cover, and that, that buzz bait's up there doing its thing, very subtle, very quiet, and that swim bait is underwater, kicking, looking good, and they will blast it. The other one that I focus a lot of time on whoop, is this DNM with that quad plastic blade on it. So four bladed plastic blade because it has four blades, it can go slower. Because it's plastic, it can go slower. The end result it is a very quiet, very subtle buzz and I can slow roll it past cover because I already know they're in the cover. If I fly by them, they don't always have time to come out and get it. But when I'm slow rolling past them, they've got time to come out the edge and blast that thing. So that subtle buzz or that really natural buzz midday. In the evening, evening is a different animal. This is a mega bass. This guy is obnoxious. It's got a lot of sound to it. It's got a clacker. What I like about this buzz bait is it's an oversized blade. So it will move some water. It leaves a big trail and it's got a clacker without having some big obnoxious arm. This brass bead is on the main shaft of the buzz bait. And as that blade comes around, it clicks that bead. That's it. It's loud. When that thing is out in the water, it's clacking really loud. And then it's got these four longer strands in the skirt, so you don't even need a trailer. The one thing I might do is put a trailer hook on there, okay? And I'll link that down in the video description. I'll link all the baits, the gear I use to throw these, trailer hook, all that stuff, our favorite colors but I really like that one lower light because again, temperatures are up, water temps are up high. The bass's metabolism is up high. So in the evening, in the low light, they feed aggressively. So that fast moving straight retrieve bait is key. You don't see me throwing a lot of the spook or a shower blows. The farther towards the end of summer I get, the more I focus on straight retrieve baits. As I get into fall, I switch back to walking baits. Right now, I want baits that the fish are going to chase down. They're gonna haul after and they're just gonna explode on it. So again, here I've got a lot of sound, a lot of commotion, but not a lot of junk hanging off. I love that bead on the shaft. That was very innovative. Just a great overall profile. And then last is going to be this category that's a little bit harder to, to put together. Uh, first one in this is gonna be the Whopper Plopper. So a hard bait, still a straight retrieve bait. If you're not familiar with the Whopper Plopper, it runs on the surface, that tail's back there kicking, and it has this distinct whop, 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 whop sound as it comes through the water. Uh, I focus my time on the 130 size and the 110 size. Uh, both are great options, uh, but the Whopper Plopper, I mean, it's, I'm sure you're familiar. The Whopper Plopper is one of those baits that just has the magic. It just catches them. Now it's an odd bait. The first time you throw it, you're like, there's no way a bass is gonna eat that. 
it's loud, it's obnoxious, it looks like an airplane coming in to land on the water, that big prop back there throwing water, spraying everywhere. But the first time a fish hits it with everything it's got, you'll understand. Another bait, this is a new one. Z-Man came out with the Hellraiser. It's a very unique bait. Uh, the Hellraiser is a, is a hard plastic bait combined with a heavy weighted like chatterbait inspired blade on the back. It looks about as crazy as a whopper plopper does, but in the water, it looks awesome. So first off, it's a sinking bait. If you throw it out there and leave it, it'll sink. But you throw it out and you keep that rod tip up high and you just steady retrieve. It looks awesome. Underwater, that blade is back there flashing. As a result, the fish aim for it. So the hookup ratio for me has been really, really good. Uh, the bait itself, the nose, see how it has this long skinny nose, a very odd looking bait. Well, the water line is here. That nose is above water line. And as it's coming towards you, it's walking. The overall, it's got a rattle in it. That overall back and forth motion, it's spitting water, it's rattling, and that blade is back there shining. It's one of those baits where I hold it in my hand and I go, there's no way. And then I throw it in the water and you're like, oh no, they're gonna destroy that. And sure enough, that's what they have done. That is a really unique bait, ton of innovation in there and it is a fish catching option. And again, straight retrieve, straight retrieve. And then the last one is a bait that you may have never seen. This is the Tekel Blade Waker. And then I just put a little spanky swim bait on the back of it. Uh, you don't wanna put an overpowering swim bait on it. Just a small swim bait like that little spanky is perfect. This is like a cross between a chatterbait and a buzzbait. It's a topwater, obviously, but same deal, same concept, runs in a straight line and it spits water out the front. When we first moved to Chickamauga, I got on a bite with this bait and it became almost the only bait I threw on this lake for several months. Uh, I just couldn't keep fish off it. Everywhere I went, I'd throw that thing and they'd eat it. I mean, everywhere. I'd go try that cove, go drive five miles, try that cove, go down to the dam. Nice. Everywhere I went, they would just blast it. Uh, it's just one of those special baits that has that something. And that's why I had these in this little category by themselves, right? The Hellraiser, the Blade Waker, and the Whopper Plopper. They're like baits that you can't really put in a category. The only category is they crush fish. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Again, this time of year, I want you to focus on two things. I want you throwing top water in the middle of the day. If you want to catch a big one, try top water in the middle of the day. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But what do you have to lose? Go out there and give it a try. Because if it works, if your lake is one of those lakes where they will really eat that around heavy cover, you're going to wreck shop when other people are going home. And then outside of that, Focus your attention on straight retrieve baits. Toad style baits in heavy cover, buzz baits around cover, and those hard baits in open water. Concept is the same amongst all of them, but each one has an area where it works the best. You take a whopper plopper and you get one weed on it. One little strand, it's done. It won't run right. It's just back there flopping around. But you take that bait, you throw it in the, off, in the open water, it's magic. You take a toad, you can throw it in the thickest of cover. You take that buzz bait, it'll fish in open water or in cover. They all have their own niche. Again, down in the video description, this is a big category and I blazed through it, but I'll link each bait and I'll give you my favorite colors for each one. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of the rods that I use to throw them, maybe a budget combo as well that's really good for throwing a lot of these different styles of top water. But top water, late summer, is amazing. It's just challenging. You need to know how to adapt. You had to know that midday they'd be on that shade and you could still catch them. And then in the evening is when they're running all over the place, running down bait fish, and you can catch them on those faster straight retrieve baits. Once you know that, it's easy. You just needed that piece of the puzzle.
Hopefully this helps you. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.